So the number one assumption is that a fast metabolism leads to weight loss. And believe it or not, we don't really have evidence of that. Um, the When you look at different cultures around the world, some that are lean, some that are overweight, etc., and you compare their metabolic rates, you're like, oh, man, they're all basically the same. Bringing you a reasoned approach to health and fitness. This is the Phi Life Podcast. Welcome to the Fire Life Podcast. I'm John Barber, and with me is Brad Pilon. And I got a question about um, eating in a caloric deficit or dieting, and what does that do to your metabolism? Does it slow your metabolism down? The typical story. starvation mode. Yeah, here we go. Mode, all that sort of stuff. Um, I guess this has been talked about ad nauseum over and over again. Uh, but given that I keep getting questions about it, it seems as though it's not clear. And I guess we might as well do the simplest, briefest explanation of how to think your way through this. If you're going to be on a diet, uh, specifically a calorie reduced diet, which basically all diets are, as opposed to just changing macronutrients without really, without really eating any, any less. Yeah. So man, so much to unpack when it comes to metabolism and metabolic rate or how quickly you burn calories, which is all we're really talking about the rate at which you use energy and just mass amount of assumptions that we've really been ingrained in our heads mostly because of of mass media so the number one assumption is that a fast metabolism leads to weight loss and believe it or not we don't really have evidence of that um the when you look at different cultures around the world some that are lean some that are overweight etc and you compare their metabolic rates you're like oh man, they're all basically the same. So then you think, okay, well then hold on, there's a low metabolism. Let's just say low, does that cause weight gain? And the answer is like, not always no, right? So your perpetually thin friend who can eat whatever he or she wants, doesn't just have a faster metabolism than you do. There's, there's more at play than, than there is there. So then the question is, okay, well, let's just stick with this whole metabolism thing is having a higher metabolic rate healthier. And then that opens up a whole can of worms because one of the main hallmarks of cancer is an increased metabolic rate. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with a lot of thyroid diseases, same thing with a lot of, um, even dementias uh, come with a slightly elevated metabolic rate. Obesity itself is associated with having a higher metabolic rate and the very act of laying down new body fat during the initial stages of a high calorie diet where you're just starting to gain body fat is also associated with a higher metabolic rate. So you have all these situations that you generally don't want to be in that are associated with a high metabolic rate. Then you stop and you think, okay, what about people with slow metabolic rates? And you realize that um, well-trained athletes uh, endurance athletes, those type of people, pound for pound, will probably have a slower metabolic rate than your average person uh, along the lines of the same way they have a slower heart rate, right? So it gets very, very dicey. And then you start thinking, okay, but hold on, muscle mass, right? That's really important. Obviously, your lean mass is a main driver of your metabolic rate, which is true. But the problem is lean mass isn't one thing. And when we look at all your lean mass, it's pretty impressive. It's like 22 calories per pound per hour or something along those lines. It's, it's, it's really good. Except the people carrying all of that are your, your liver, your lungs, your heart, all the actual organs. When it comes down to actual skeletal muscle mass, you're looking at like six calories per pound per egg. It's just not, not mm -hmm. that much. So a bigger human being, which by the way, is why with John and I's equations, we often use height to determine your, your metabolic rate or your calorie needs, because a bigger person's going to have a bigger liver, bigger heart, etc. But in terms of two guys who are both five foot 10, and one guy gains six, seven pounds of muscle and just looks much larger than the other guy, his metabolic needs really haven't gone up. So I, it, it's a weird thing to even be concerned with. Um, and then John, remember you and I looked over that biggest loser trial from 2004 or five. And that was the one that showed massive losses in metabolic rate. So their metabolic rate really slowed down as they lost weight. 
until we realized that the specific contestant they were talking about was roughly my height. And he had lost like 110 pounds and his metabolic rate was like 70% of what it was. Like it was really low, but it was still like 400 calories per day higher than mine. So while he did have this dramatic drop in metabolic rate, his metabolic rate was still arguably, if you want to use higher being better, be better than mine. So did it really matter? Like, yes, his metabolic rate definitely slowed down because he wasn't carrying extra mass around and didn't have all that um, body fat that he had to feed energy to. So was, is that a good thing or a bad thing? So I don't, I don't know. I don't know what your take is on it, but it's not something I even concern myself with ever. Well, yeah, me neither, but the question came in. So I figure we might as well answer it. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, there's a couple things there. It, it's relative, right? It's a relative metabolic rate increase or decrease, as Brad said. So for someone coming down from a really, really big BMI, well, when you measure their relative metabolic rate, it was much, much higher um, for an individual at the same height as Brad. And Brad's, you know, Brad's in shape. He's, you know, got plenty of muscle. He works out all the time. Is well, I think he's, he's yeah. Well, but you're not, you're not, you're not small or big for your size. You're in a normal no. BMI, but you've been working out with weights since high school. Exactly. So, in that case, I would argue whatever Brad's metabolic rate is, in the absence of any obvious metabolic disease, which you don't have. Like as far as we know, all of every your body's more or less normal, right? You're just normal, healthy guy that works out. Yeah. Kind, pretty lean. Yeah. So I would say your metabolic rate is the the standard to work off of in this example versus someone who was whatever, 500 pounds and dropped 200 pounds. Yes. And his metabolic rate was way, way higher than yours at, when he was really, really big. And after he lost a bunch of weight, his rate came down, but it was still higher than yours. Yes. So what's the argument? Is that guy's metabolic rate when he was 500 pounds? Is that how it's, much it's supposed to be for a five foot 10 male? Or is his yeah. metabolic rate when he's still 300 pounds and it's lower than his used to be when he was even bigger, but still higher than yours? Is that the correct metabolic rate for a 5'10 so male? When or he was is... overweight, mm -hmm. his body was doing more work. And mm -hmm. that's your metabolic rate. So his liver was working, right? The, his, his kidneys were working. His GI tract was working. And, and then... The musculature of his, but well, actually, even the cardiovascular system having to pump blood to all of that extra adipose tissue and all the massive amount of capillaries, the little blood vessels that have been laid out to support that, that, that takes work. You got to pump it through there. Mm -hmm. And then every time he, he would go up or down the stairs or go for a walk, he's obviously doing more work than I am. So the question is, if, if you were to cut down and let's say he went down from 350 down to my exact size of uh, 170 pounds but maintained his body doing that much work my guess would be that would feel horrible like that would feel like something is wrong i should probably go to a hospital like i don't it to it's just a measure of work being done and that to have a body that's doing that much more work meaning that liver is working that much harder or the, the heart or some, something is needing that much more energy is, is a, actually a fairly scary proposition. Yeah, I think it, the mistake is assuming metabolic rate has something to do with how you feel. Like you can feel it. You can't, mm -hmm. unless you have like a, an infection or a fever or something very obvious, it, you, you can't really feel your metabolic rate. Yeah, in that situation, if you could, to your point, I don't think it would feel good. I think you'd feel mm. feverish and ill. Like it's, but you, it's not. It's mm. not energy, right? To, to no. your point, yeah. That, that's. I think the mistake is assuming it's something to do with wakefulness in the sense that you have energy. I think to me, that's caffeine. More, yeah, that feel that's, right, or yeah. And you can show that stimulants cause a little bit of an increase in in energy expenditure. Yep. But it, it, so I, I think it's taking that, those senses of, oh, but I feel more awake, feel more energetic after I have some caffeine. That must mean my metabolism is, is moving faster, but it's not, it's not really, it's not really something you can feel. And if not you, the same thing. Yeah. And if it's, and if it's like Brad said, it's, it's heavily dependent on how much work your internal organs are doing. If they're working too hard, that's usually an indication of something's not right. Yeah. And, and I guess, I mean, there is research to show if you calorie restrict, you can have, you can show some decrease in daily energy expenditure, but totally. it's, it's, it's nominal. 
Yeah. It could also be partly, we know that you can feel kind of exhausted if you're on a, a calorie restricted diet for any length of time. So you may just voluntarily move a bit less. You may actually have a detuning of your central nervous system a little bit where you do burn a bit less. I mean, all that can happen. Yeah. But your body's not dumb. It's trying to conserve. Yeah, right? it's, yeah, yeah. There's always, yeah. There's always an underlying theme of conservation of energy always happening in your body. It's not. It's not just going to let you waste away. It's going to try to sort of pull you back and say, okay, if you're not eating much, let's not do much. So some of that's going on, but it's it's marginal and it's not going to be. First of all, it's not like it moves lower and stays there forever or it moves up and stays there forever. It's right. it's a dynamic state with what you're doing. And it's not going to be explanatory for your ability to gain or lose weight. And unless it's in a very extreme condition, for example, the Ansel Keys study where they starved people uh, down 25% of their total body weight. And we were talking about people who weren't very big to begin with. Very uh, lean. Point, very very lean. lean people trying to recreate a prison of war camp too. Let's not forget. Mm -hmm. This wasn't right. a optimal nutrition. This was cabbage soup. Right. Yeah. Terrible, terrible, minimal diet, um, a starvation diet. It's a, it was a starvation yeah. experiment on purpose. Yeah. Now, I think most of this fear of a slow met metabolism or metabolic rate changing comes literally from that study. And that's yes. a study that can never be recreated for ethical reasons. You just can't recreate that study. But there's a lot of interesting data we got from it. And so I think that has persisted since then. Mm -hmm. And there's this fear that you can, uh, people say words like damage your metabolism. It doesn't really make any sense. You can damage a car, but your metabolism is just a, an explanation of the state of, of all of the functioning of your, of your um, internal organs. Well, yeah. your whole system. So I, I think, it's just a misinterpretation of what metabolic rate means and sensing it must have something to do with how you feel or how energetic you are. And I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause my and, thought there to just jump in really quick is yeah, yeah. from my understanding, and I've never been overly overweight, but from my understanding is there's a certain level of exhaustion that comes from just carrying around that much extra mass. And then when you look at someone who's um, habitually lean, you see a level of energy and you assume that's a proxy for the metabolic rate. And then when you're dieting hard, to your point, when the body tries to conserve, so you still don't have that, that energy you think you're going to have to do stuff, you think my metabolism must have slowed down. But really what you've done is you've replaced the kind of exhaustion from carrying around the extra weight with an exhaustion that comes from dieting. And that would normalize once you normalize your calories after a while, wow. normalize your lean mass and... and got a new steady state, you would then possibly have that energy you think you're missing. But there's, we should do a podcast on energy because there's so much at play, your sleep, mm -hmm. your, your, your life stress, et cetera. But I think it's people misinterpreting your, your feeling of energy combined with your visual of other people's energy levels and assuming that that's their metabolic rate. That's what I would guess. Right. And yeah, so that's a good way to say it. And so it's not necessarily something you can feel. Yes, there's some data saying if you go super calorie restricted for extended periods of time, uh, you can be on the other side burning less total energy, but that doesn't mean it's going to be like that forever. Also, if you're not in a compromised metabolic state, so I would argue people who can get all the way up to five and 600 pounds, that's not, they just didn't overeat. I mean, obviously something they, is wrong they, there. Yeah. Something's metabolically off. It's not yeah. the same as, as many of us, as we get into middle age, just the, but the body weight creeps up and the fat mass just creeps up over the decades. And it's like, Oh, you know, I've been putting on a few pounds a year. That, that is something uh, completely different than someone who can go up to three, four, 500 pounds. Yes. That, that's a compromised metabolism. The rest of us who just sort of gain the whole North American syndrome, you don't necessarily have a compromised metabolism. So if you diet that back off and you do have a slight decrease in measurable energy expenditure, that's, that's not irreversible. And that that's makes sense when you're, when you're dieting. And then the other piece of that is the misinterpretation of the starvation experiment study where those people dieted down to the point where they looked like they were going to die. They, yeah. you could see all of their ribs. They were way, way, way off the of the low end of the scale. And it was on purpose. It wasn't meant for a healthy weight loss or anything that we would want to do for our no. health or aesthetics. This was to simulate people starving to death. And you would expect a dramatic, dramatic decrease in their metabolic rate. I mean, they couldn't even last 
60 seconds on a treadmill they would just they would yeah. fall off it, like it was meant to push them not only physically to a a size of basically emaciation but you would expect their metabolism to be utterly compromised at as you're starving to death Same now someone in a disease state right if you've yeah. if you've lost so much weight that now it's beginning to compromise the function of your liver and other organs then you could see a severe slowing down because you're actually not functioning <laughs> properly. So there are the extremes on either side that, mm -hmm. that people use as examples, but you're like, but that's not what we're talking about here. Right. So I guess to wrap it up here, the take home message and the simple way to think about it is forget about research on metabolic rates and worrying, are you, is your slowing down if you're trying to lose weight? The simple way to think of it is if you're not, if you're not coming down from, I don't know, three or 400 pounds all the way down to like 150 pounds, don't worry about it anything there, just losing the weight's actually good for you. And if you're anywhere in a normal BMI range and you're not getting into an emaciated state where you can literally see all of your ribs and you're, I mean, I'm, I'm talking way past visible abs, way, way, way below that for both men and women. Mm -hmm. I'm, ta I'm talking getting all the way. I mean, look at, watch our starvation experiment. Um, we do a, a podcast on it and the, the, the thumbnail is just showing how far starved these guys really got and you could see all of their yeah. ribs if you're not in that state and you're not you know three four hundred plus coming down to a norm it, you're if you're neither of those it's none of this matters which yeah. i would argue is probably almost everybody or everyone even asking this question so none of it matters if you're not finding yourselves in one of those two camps and if you want to reduce calories to lose it's fine don't don't even think yeah. about this and it and again it has nothing to do if you feel tired, that's probably kind of, you expect that if you're eating low yep. consistently. Yep. So just have a day where you eat up a bit and a I lot of that energy say, will come back. Yeah. Or you've gone and, too low for, for your daily activity and daily needs and then yeah. jump it up a little bit, right? Like it's, yep. take, take the slower approach to weight loss. Sometimes some people can handle the, the deep, deep drops, right? Um, and you can handle them acutely. We do it for 24 hour fast once or twice a week. Tons of us do that. But some mm -hmm. people just can't handle it for weeks and weeks on end. Up your calories a bit. So I think what you're really worried about is your daily energy levels. And mm -hmm. that's a different thing. Yeah. yeah. And that's, yeah. Yeah. So, and a 24-hour and fast, a lot of people get an energy boost from that. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So don't don't get caught up thinking your metabolic rate's going to be damaged if you're dieting for weight loss. It's, it's not going to happen. Um, and if you do feel tired, it's not your metabolism per se. And just bump up your calories and you'll likely get a little boost of energy and then check in on your sleep too. Like all of that stuff yeah. matters. And in the end, that's that feeling of tiredness. It doesn't really have anything to do with anything going on with your metabolic rate. Yeah. In fact, if your metabolics are really, really high, you, you might feel tired. So yeah. So just mm -hmm. worry about your daily energy levels, not in terms of your metabolic rate, but just in terms of how you're feeling and can you make it through a day and then adjust yep. as needed. Yeah. Yep. All right. I think that's a good place to leave that one. Perfect. All right. So for Brad Pilon, I'm John Barbin, and that's your Five Life Podcast.